any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So saith Arthur C. Clarke in his 1962 book, Profiles of the Future, an Inquiry into the Limits of the Possible. This is the principle behind metastable material, or MSM. These super heavy isotopes are synthetic and have fantastical properties. The idea is that any sort of logical leap that needs to be made in order to justify any sort of out there technology within the narrative can be chalked up to the use of MSM. It's a catch-all for explaining in-game story elements in a hard sci-fi setting such as that of the Neon Skies role-playing game. It's a here be dragons hand wave with at least some small amount of narrative to support it. After all, such story elements, like fusion weapons, hovering vehicles, partially synthetic human beings, are, for all intents and purposes, indistinguishable from magic. Hello everyone, Wylock here. Thanks for joining me. I've been on a real sci-fi kick lately. Getting ready for the release of Neon Skies should come out in the middle of 2024. This is some miniature terrain ripped directly from the source material, and they will appear in the book. So, here's a little vlog on how I built them. And remember, if you're a 3D printer, you must check out Heroes Horde and their outstanding selection of models for your tabletop gaming, including the original True Tiles lines. I don't know, maybe it's the nuclear engineer in me, but I just love stuff that glows blue. So here's a trick I've used a few times before on the channel. I've got these fuses, and I'm going to tint the glass using a blue Sharpie. Just like when you're painting, two thin coats here is the order of the day to get a nice transparent but non-streaky blue. And you can do this with any color of Sharpie. Here's the remnants of a little toy car. And I rather like the wheels, so let's pop those off. Get them primed with God's gift to humanity, Rust-Oleum 2X Flat Gray Primer. And then I applied a base coat of a metallic with my airbrush. Followed by a black wash. I'm also gonna assemble some blue LEDs. I like to harvest them from Christmas lights. Done this many times before as well. I'll put my ultimate LED tutorial as a card up on the screen. You can go watch that if you want. But I'm gonna take two of these blue ones and solder them up in series with a nine volt battery. And then as it happens, 12 of these fuses fit perfectly within the diameter of that wheel. So doing things in a smart order and sandwiching it all together with some hot glue, voila. I imagine this will be like the fuel cell or maybe the reactor or maybe this is the actual material being converted into MSM. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. The point is it glows, so it's going to look good on the table. All right, let's put that aside and let's build a recycling center. You'll see these probably one per square mile throughout the city. They're pretty readily available and it's just like a kiosk off the side of the street like any other storefront. So I built the inside structure from double corrugated cardboard, nice and strong. And then the outer shell is a graphics medium chipboard. This is the thick stuff you'll find at the back of a legal pad, but you can buy it in bulk like I do if you want. There's links in the video description below. And for smoothness, I took some food packaging box and glued it onto the outside with the shiny side out. Then I went to all my leftover modeling bits, these are my 40k bags, and found a bunch of doodads just to glue on it and make it look sci-fi-ish. Vehicle parts in particular tend to be good for this sort of thing. So I embellished it with all those bits, uh, threw some panels on there of chipboard. On the front I made this thin strip of cardstock, this is like the door that flaps open and you can insert your material that's going to be recycled down into MSM. And then the fun part, painting and decaling. Or if you're from Canada, decaling. I made these decals on my home printer. I'll link the product on Amazon that I used. And the sheet itself was assembled by Stephen Henderson of Mindless Telepathy Designs, shared via the Tabletop Crafters group on Facebook. A Little bit of dabbing with this silver paint makes for a nice chipping effect, worn up a little bit. So that's the recycler. Now let's look at the industrial size manufacturing grade MSM processor. This is the kind of thing you'll only find up in Terryton, which is the industrial sector in the northern part of Rook City. Because MSM is so volatile, these factories are required to be built with a one mile exclusion zone around them. Nothing is permitted to be built there other than pavement, making for basically a massive circular parking lot. Or, as the Blitzers gang has discovered, a perfect area to ambush, as there is nowhere to hide in these concrete deserts once a vehicle chase has begun. So I've been harvesting from this old Denon DVD player lately. A lot of good parts in it. I took out the actual optical drive itself and took that apart and extracted this nice carrier piece from it. Makes for a nice 
sci-fi looking platform or skid. I've also got this blue piece from a Wendy's kids meal. That'll somehow come in handy. Oh, and look at this Nerf gun. I love these things. Look at the top half of it. You've got industrial looking exhausts, smokestacks, whatever. So this thing's time has come. Let's go out to the miter saw. All right, and back to the workbench. I found this terrain crate box at the friendly local gaming shop's clearance shelf. There's some nice computer consoles in there. So doing a quick dry fit up, arranging these random components, and then hot gluing them all together, followed by painting. I'm trying to use the same family of like four or five colors for all of my cyberpunk related terrain, so I have a nice consistent aesthetic on the table. I'm only using black washes, not brown washes, because I don't want it to be grunged up and worn down. I just want it to look gritty and industrial. There's a difference. Speaking of those computer consoles, there's no way I can paint detail that small. So I'm gonna go the print and paste route. More decaling. Then I had one more idea before I attached the glowy bit. Look at this oval window looking thing right here. This could be a look inside like the exhaust stack or where the reaction is partially going on or something like that. Anyway, it needs to glow blue. So I airbrushed on some dark blue in a wide beam then some electric blue in a much narrower beam. And then some pure white just in the center up real close. There we go, nice blue glow. And as it happens, those toy car wheels fit exactly into this hole in the DVD carrier piece. Nice. More fun with LEDs. If you're new here, be sure to check out my backlog. I have my LED tutorial plus, you know, a hundred other videos. And there are 40,000 people like me on the Tabletop Crafters Guild on Facebook, so come find us. Lots of resource links in the video description below. And thanks for watching today. Until next time, I'm Wylock. Make things, play games.